What color do you see on the left side of the board? Right? What color do you see on the right side of the board? Okay, let's say this is dark blue and light blue. Does everyone agree? Okay, so what would you call them in general? All right, now are there any people who speak Russian? Yeah, <laughs> great, see a couple of hands. All right, so what would you call the color on the left in Russian? Sini. So what about the color on the right? Uh-huh, and now what would you call them together? <laughs> <laughs> I get you trapped, because in Russian, you can't call them together. In Russian, you can't say just blue. You have to either say sini, dark blue, or boy, light blue. Now, I know that there are two or three Armenian speakers too, right? So, I'm giving you a sentence, and you translate it to Armenian. I have an uncle. Yes, See, now Nana said yes, Kerune, but she's not correct. <laughs> because... Because I have an uncle can mean I have an uncle from my mother's side or I have an uncle from my father's side. What Nana said is I have an uncle from my mother's side. But I can say, yes, which would mean I have an uncle from my father's side. And that would also be a correct translation. So see, Armenian, just like Russian doesn't allow you to say just blue, Armenian doesn't allow you to say just uncle you have to specify what uncle you are talking about. So now, there are these differences in languages. But when I was reading Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling in Armenian, I generally understood what was going on in the book, even though it was a translation, even though there were these differences in languages. I read the same book, almost the same book, as English people did. And you might be wondering why I was holding this ruler, right? Well, the reason is that translation is like measurement. So when you measure something, let's say it's 20 centimeters, but most of us know that it's not 20. It's 20 plus minus 0.005. Yeah, <laughs> chemistry, physics, 10th tenth, tenth grade. So, <laughs> so it's very similar to translations. When I read Harry Potter, I was also seeing the same 20 centimeters, but there was this small uncertainty because languages are different for a reason. You can't just move ideas between them without losing something. So I lost that 0.005, but it's so minor that it doesn't really, really matter. But is there a case where it's not just 0.005, but it's one centimeter, or maybe even 10? Well, do you think this person over here is a boy or a girl? Yeah, most of you said girl, and you were correct, but She's actually the main character of Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird. And when I was reading this book, there was something really weird. I couldn't understand the gender of the main character until about page 60, because the author was only giving clues. And the author was even confusing me by quotes like, I swear, Scout, sometimes you act so much like a girl, it's mortifying. And, well, when you say you act so much like a girl, it's mortifying, we understand that a person is not supposed to act like a girl, right? Or Scout was saying, I beat him up one time, but he was real nice about it. And beating up and girls, like in 1960, they were like miles away, really. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why the author really confused me. And I was thinking, maybe my English is too bad, maybe I don't understand this book correctly, but then I realized that this is an essential part of the theme, because halfway through the book, this character comes, whose name is Aunt Alexandra. So she's Scout's aunt, and she tries to make a girl out of Scout. So first in the book, Scout identifies herself as just a child. I'm not a girl, not a boy, but just a child. But then Aunt Alexandra turns her into a girl. And in the, at the end of the girl, you can see Scout wearing dresses and drinking coffee with her auntie and her friends. So just like Scout reveals her gender, discovers her gender, the reader does the same. So we have the same journey as the main character does. We really live with her. But then let's take a look at this example. So when I say Mariam went home in English, Russian or Armenian, I know that I'm talking about a girl. 
because Mariam is the name of a girl. All right, now let's change Mariam, Mariam with a pronoun, with she. She went home. I know that it's a girl. Anna pasla damoy. I know that it's a girl. But when I say na gnatstun, it's just a question mark. Because in Armenian, as Nana probably knows, the pronoun na represents both boys and girls. But even if I really want to hide the gender of a person, and I just give Mariam a nickname, let's say Scout. So Scout went home. I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. I still don't know. But then when I say Glazaistik, Pash la damoy, Pash a damoy, I know that it's a girl. Because just like you can't say just blue in Russian, you cannot say just went in Russian or just any verb in Russian. Because you have to either say Pashol or Pashla. Pashol would be about boys and Pashla would be about girls. So when I want to translate this sentence into Russian, I have to say ya izbilivo or ya izbilaivo. And wait, so th does this mean that in Russian you cannot hide someone's gender? Yes, it does. And when I was reading the Russian book, guess what? The gender of Scout was revealed since the very first page. So if I were to discuss this book with my Russian friend who doesn't know about the hiding of Scout's gender, we would have complete different understandings of the book. So it's no longer 0.005. It's already a huge difference because my friend didn't get that part of the theme that I did. And that is why reading Harry Potter in Armenian and reading To Kill a Mockingbird, um, to Kill a Mockingbird in Russian are a bit different because even though there are the differences in Harry Potter too, they don't matter so much. But Harper Lee decided to use this uniqueness th that English has and the opportunity that it gives her to convey a theme. So when you read it in Russian, you don't really get the thing that she wanted to convey. And another example of this would be Room by Emma Donahue. So before going into the book, I want to tell you something. For example, this ruler would be feminine in Russian because it's linéka, and if it finishes with a, then it's feminine, or, or, or with ya. So that's how Russian works, and Spanish works the same way, and German works the same way. These languages have a thing that's called grammatical gender. So, so in this book, in Room by Emma Donahue, a mother and her son are trapped in a room for five years, and her son has never seen the world outside of the room. So it's logical to think that he should be a little bit weird. And how is this weirdness expressed in the book? Well, he thinks that all the objects around him have genders. So for example, this rug wouldn't be just it. It would be a she. So he has kind of a Russian mind. But it's really weird for English people. Because when you say rug, she in English, then rug is personified. And he says, we've been making labyrinths since I was two. She's all ro toilet roll insides taped together in tunnels that twist lots of ways. Now, labyrinth is she. Fine. Now let's try to translate this to Russian. First of all, labyrinth would be he, because it finishes with letter T. But that's not what really matters. You can argue that it, it doesn't matter if he thinks of labyrinth as she or it, uh, or as she or he. But the thing is that in Russian, it's completely natural to say lab that labyrinth is he, because that's what people do. So the thing that is seen as weirdness in English in Emma Donahue's book is seen as a complete normal thing in Russian. That is why I want to connect it to this thing that Roman Jacobson has said. Languages differ essentially in what they must convey, and not in what they may convey. So in Russian, I must convey a gender of a person. In Armenian, I must convey the side of my uncle. I can't just hide it. So now, I have a question for you. Is it really the same book? Thank you.